Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to teach you how to make this DIY mason jar crate out of real wood. I'm going to use one by four boards. These are 12 inches long. I'm going to have four of them. Then you're going to need a miter box and miter saw because I'm going to teach you how to use some basic woodworking tools. I'm going to use my my screw gun, my power. This is a DeWalt 12 volt. I'm going to use some paint to add that distressed look. And you're also going to need some screws, which I don't have here. Um, but what I measured three of the uh, quart size mason jars. You need to make the box, the inside of the box, 11 by 4. Um, and they'll fit perfectly. And for those of you who are new to woodworking, a 1 by 4 is not actually 1 inch by 4 inches. It's 3 eighths of an inch by 1 and 3 quarters of an inch normally. So what we're doing is I'm taking the piece of wood that's going to be the bottom and I'm measuring it against one of the sides and I'm drawing a line to mark where it is. And now I'm putting um, the sideboard against the bottom board and I'm pre-drilling where I want my three screw holes to be. When you're screwing into the side of a thin piece of wood like a 1x4, um, you don't want the wood to split so you need to remove some of the material and that's why we pre-drill our holes. You don't want your drill that you pick for pre-drilling to be bigger than your screw but you want to make sure that it's big enough that you won't split your wood. Okay. So I'm marking where I want um, the screws to go and then I'm pre-drilling and I'm using the extra board that's going to be the other side just to help uh, stabilize the, the piece of wood. All right. And then when I have all of the holes pre-drilled, then we're going to go ahead and use screws. Um, I didn't specify in the beginning what kind of screws because I actually didn't have any wood screws on hand. These are actually sheetrock screws and they work fine because this isn't a kind of project where it's going to be holding a lot. Um, you could also probably nail and glue, which is another video that I think I'm going to do next. I'm going to teach you how to use just nails and glue. Um, and this was just like um, to show you guys some basic woodworking tools and they're not very expensive you can get a drill gun or a screw gun for about twenty dollars and the miter box was like less than ten with the saw um, and there are lots of tricks to using miter boxes but I'm just going to show you a couple you know pop taught me uh, I always had a problem let the saw do the work stop pushing stop pulling just let the saw do the work <laughs> I'll show you when we get there but now I'm drilling um screwing in to where I pre-drilled and um, it isn't yet that I figured out that I need spacers so um, it's not till I went to go put the jar in that I realized that it was a little too tight so we're going to adjust that later but right now you can see I'm doing both sides and it's funny because I actually pre-measured I put the jar in there to see if the space was wide enough and it was but not until I put the sides on and then I don't know. Sometimes your wood can bow, and uh, I think that was part of the problem we had here. Um, so now I'm loosening it up a bit because the jar didn't fit. <laughs> um, actually, really funny. The jar fit on one side, and when I slid it across the other side, it got tighter. Don't ask me. I don't know. So I'm using the jar then to keep to stop screwing. Basically I'm using the jar as a spacer, but be careful when you do this. You don't want to accidentally screw into the jar. All right. And it did take some adjusting. I want you to know, um, I, I left it on there to show you guys that sometimes you have to figure it out. Sometimes you, you come across a problem and you have to figure it out on the fly. But um, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to figure it out for you. But you guys can see that um, there's a process and I want to share the process with you for sure. Now, come to figure that Emily's jars are actually a little smaller than the jar that I had. The jar that I had was from the Dollar Tree. It was sort of that square mason jar, uh, quart size, and it it's not as big as hers. Hers fit like with more room, so I probably didn't have to do this. So definitely get your jar, check it out, and see how it fits. If you're going to do the little pint-sized jars, then you won't even have to do any of this. This is you could just stick with the standard, um, the standard one by four 
with, okay? Now, when I think I have it all straightened out, <laughs> I think I finally have it. I'm taking the board that was going to be used for the sides, and I am measuring the width of the box. And I'm marking which width goes to which side of the box, if that makes sense. So I've marked it with A and B. And now I'm just making the lines straight. Because the boards were warped, the, the lines wanted to be warped as well. So I went ahead and straightened them out by its widest point. So now I'm going to show you how to do the miter box. The miter box has a little lip on it where it goes to the edge of your table. And it has cuts for straight and 45 degrees in both directions. Um, and you want to let the wood, the, the saw do its work, okay? <laughs> okay, my dad always used to be like, stop pulling, stop pushing. I believe this is a back saw, which means it actually cuts on the pull. Um, but I tend to want to push too because I'm impatient. But it doesn't really take that long and it doesn't take that much skill or strength to get through wood on a miter box. Um, but this particular miter box does not let you go straight through to the bottom so you don't cut the plastic. Um, so I've had to mark the other side and turn it over. Um, the miter box that we had growing up will let me go through all the material, but um, I lost it in the move, so I can't even tell you exactly where it went, uh, to be honest with you. So I bought this one when I moved here. Um, and uh, that's sawdust on the table. I'm not cutting my table. <laughs> but the um, this particular miter box saw has a, um, a guide on the top that won't let you cut all the way to the bottom. Okay? And I always put it away when I'm done so to protect me and everything else, my surfaces and, and the blade. All right? So I'm just doing a little bit of cleanup. And... <laughs> Don't worry, there's a garbage can down there. Um, we'll do a little bit of cleanup and the get to screwing. So we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to pre-drill um, our sides as to not split the wood. And I'm marking... Sorry, I'm marking the wood on the inside. So now I'm looking like these boards don't fit. I just measured them and cut them. I measured them to the thing. So it wasn't even like measuring wrong. It wasn't even like saying it's four inches and I needed six. It, I literally put it up to the piece of wood. So, um, yeah, so that happens sometimes. And that's what caused the, <clears throat> the box to close in on me a little bit. I ended up putting in spacers, but you're going to pre-drill just like we did before. You're going to mark where you need to pre-drill, you're going to mark where you need to pre-cut, and there you go. So I'm marking on the inside where I need to pre-drill, and you can always transfer that, um, that measurement to the um, inside. So basically, I could pre-drill the sides first, and then once I have the sides up against the, the um, I'm sorry, pre-drill the ends first and once I have the ends up against the side then you can pre-drill you could drill through that hole that's existing um, but that's just a you know if you have trouble holding on to the pieces of material together I guess is my piece of advice all right and then once I have all of this holes pre-drilled then I'm going to go ahead and screw it in and again this is just supposed to be very rustic very just a decorative um, place to wrangle her mason jars. She had quart sized mason jars with wide mouth tops to hold her cooking utensils, as you saw in the beginning, and you'll see here at the end. So I pre set these screws. There we go. I turned the board upside down accidentally. And trying to line them up to the pre drilled holes. And then once you have that, you go ahead and screw all of them in. I have three. Um, across the base attaching the sides to the bottom and just two on the sides to hold the um, the sides onto the the ends onto the side excuse me and I'm just going to repeat it with the other end I wish I would remember what to call these parts <laughs> the end 
and the sides. Now, she didn't want handles on there, but, you know, you can get handles um, cheap and easy, lots of places. That also looks cute. And she also didn't want anything stenciled on there. Uh, we saw some on Pinterest that said, like, whipster flip or whatever, and that, that was cute. But she just wanted it plain, so I just painted it plain white for her. Um, but, yeah, you could jazz these up for sure. All right. And the other thing I wanted to um, mention... Oh, it just flew out of my head. Oh, I remember. I got these boards from Aunt Sue. Um, Aunt Sue goes to a really great little bakery that serves a, um, like a strudel on these wooden boards. So she saves them for me and she gets them for me for projects and signs and stuff. I have so many. But this would be, because it's, it's four feet, it's uh, four foot of a one by four that you can have your hardware store cut into one foot lengths. Now, if you're feeling ambitious and you want to have them cut the two sides, um, I would just be careful because depending on how you actually make your, what jars you put in there and if you have to keep spacers, that one piece that you have to cut yourself, um, I would wait until your box was put together for that. Okay, and now I'm just checking with the jar and then making the adjustments that I need. Um, using the spacers of the popsicle sticks to um, keep in there while I screw in. Just be careful you don't screw into the spacer. Um, this way that the screw is nice and tight to the flush to the wood, but the space is actually still open. And the other good thing about the space in the bottom is that it could be like uh, let the crumbs pass through. So if you have a lot of crummies or whatever if you can help you know easy to clean the box out if you just have to decrumb the bottom all right now if you find that the side pieces that the end pieces that you put on um, are affecting how the 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 space is open and fitting the jars you can go ahead and take those off and readjust them fortunately that's not something i had run into which is um great and now we're just going to um, sand all of our surfaces very quickly just to get over any splintering. Now you want to set those screws in, but they don't have to. I, I actually was kind of contemplating like how cute and rustic they look if I didn't paint them, but I actually like it with, uh, we painted over the screws too, but you could still see the screws, which is which is really cute and farmhousey. Um, and now this is just white craft paint, my famous tube of white craft paint from Walmart. <clears throat> excuse me, from Apple Barrel. We've gotten a lot of use out of this. And I'm just using a foam brush um, to paint the ends. I'm actually not even painting the inside, um, just to add to that rustic, you know, feel. Excuse me, to that rustic feel. And I'm, I'm stippling the end pieces because they'll soak in a lot of paint. Uh, where the cut edges are, I'm sorry, of the end pieces. And then the end pieces I'm painting the same got some paint on my table don't tell Jim and I am painting the bottom and that's more for protection of the counter and uh, protection of the wood from the counter and that kind of stuff so and then the very lip and but I'm not going to paint the inside because the jars are going to go in there and it'll be cute it'll like enhance the uh, country feel of it all right and that's it so here's all of her stuff. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. Hopefully you give a little bit of woodworking a try. I think it's a little bit for everybody. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Share with friends and family. Anybody you know might be interested in making one of these. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. When you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. So as always, take care. God bless. See you next time. Bye.